Here's Santarelli with a goal. Santarelli finds the back of the netting once again. Turns it inside to his brother. Save on the inside. Brendan McDougal. Lindbrook hasn't won an LIC since 2000. The waiting is over. This one is wide, and the Owls have won it. Championship on the line. The Bulls down by one. Final nine seconds. Sajasi rolls. Sajasi to the cage. It's wide. Rolls towards the end line. Massapequa, never again can they say they've never been in Long Island champ. What was that uh, movie this weekend that did like seven million, seven hundred million at the box office? Is that with the Angelina Jolie? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you right My now. My girls are afraid to go see it though. I have Maleficence? not. I have not seen that movie. I can promise you this: the writing wasn't any better than in the B and the A championship. <laughs> that endings. stuff. That was wild. Yeah. I mean, that was as good. If if the semifinals and the state championships are half as good as the Long Island A and B title, then what we thought was maybe an average to above average, not a stupendous, stupendous year, then maybe we were wrong because that was as good as it gets. You know, sometimes a one goal game, uh, the team that's down just doesn't get the ball. You know, and the, the clock just ticks away. Right, right. And sometimes a sequence of events gives them the ball. We had a couple clutching calls there. Yeah. And you have sort of, you know, 10 seconds that for Tim Radomski must have felt like 30 oh. seconds, 40 seconds. Okay, it was, you, you just don't think uh, as much can go on for both Lindbrook and Massapequa as went on in the last 10 seconds of right. both those games as they, you know, hung on for dear life. Before we get to that game, I think we have to go back to the Suffolk A Championship because it's going to be surreal, more so a year from now when you look back and you see Ward Melville, Ward Melville, Ward Melville, West Islip, West Islip, West Islip. You throw a Sachem in there, maybe a little bit along the way, and now you're going to see Smithtown East. I mean, their first ever Suffolk A title at the beginning of the year. If somebody told you Smithtown East, was going to be the Suffolk A Championship. Would you believe it? No, but after, you know, following them the whole year, then doing the research for the game and seeing the talent, it's, you sort of, sort of said to yourself, okay. <laughs> and the, the other thing you said, they're not going anywhere, this program. No. They're going, not going anywhere, and we're going to have to put a few TV dates on the board for them next year because they have some young talent. I already team. told O'Keefe that. Let's take you back to the <laughs> Suffolk A final first quarter. Time running out. Tommy Marino for the Bulls. Look at that. Just boom, snapped it in there. Turn and burn. Listen, this was, this was a proving day for Smithtown East because all the doubters and naysayers says, okay, now you got West Islip in a county final. Let's see what you're made of. Danny Jealous, the senior, got those left hands free. Johnny Boy made it 4 nothing. But West Isop, you knew they were going to fight. And there's no doubt, three in a row, Trevor Bovich right there, cut the lead to one. But the East, the kids from East just knew it. Brian Willits just playing sensational across. They go on to win their first ever there it is. Suffolk A title. And look, it's very simple. You know, you're going to see these guys ripple the net and everything like that. Their thing it, he's becoming a phenomenon. This cat, Jerry Acera. I mean, it is unbelievable. You walk in the press box, Joe Cuso. Hey, did you see this? I mean, when Joe Cuso starts going gaga about you, you know you arrived. And he talked to Carl Reuter after the game where he won 20 of 21 faceoffs. You know, it's really all about practice. Uh, every time I go home, like I said, I'm just practicing all the time, you know, trying to get better. And you know, when I get our offense the ball, they could score as much goals as possible. You know, we have one of the best offenses in the country. And when I get them the ball, they could do big things. I've been here four years in my fourth year, and I set out my year to get county championship. And I never believed it would come true, but today is the day, and I'm so happy. I can't be more happy. Chosa JC, one of the few seniors. Dan yeah. and Jealous is actually a junior. Oh, that's um, right. So JC's, thank you. Yes. And, you know, what's amazing about, about our Sarah, he's just a sophomore. It's scary. Right? Already committed to Penn State. But, Mike, when you look at what he did down the stretch, um, 19 of 19 versus Ward Melville, yeah. 19 of 23 versus Midtown West, of course, the 20 and 21. And, by the way, 
also in that game. He had a goal and two assists yeah, against yeah. West Iceland nice. in that game. So, you know, that is putting your stamp on it. And for Jason Lambert in his seventh year, Mike, it was really, it, it was a moment because this is his guys he had since they were puppies mm -hmm. in the Smithtown program. These are his third and fourth graders mm -hmm. that seven years later were now the high school kids. And it's like they delivered, you know, that first ever. I know you people say, oh, Smithtown won it in 2003. This is Smithtown East. Mm -hmm. There's no titles for Smithtown Correct. East. Correct. This is the first. I'm upset with you. Well, <laughs> Big time. <laughs> the coffee didn't arrive? No, no. I mean, how do you do this to me? What did I do? You took a week off back on the second week of the season, and this guy had to fill in. Oh, jeez. And now... Hey, there he is. Mrs. Lax is now running his mouth. So what happened? You supposedly... What did you because, predict? Because you just said to Jimmy, if someone would have told you at the beginning of the season that Smithtown East would be champions, well, this guy said on the second week of the season that Smithtown East was going to be champions. And then I hear that you bring it up last week and you say, oh, he meant to say Smithtown West. No, no, no. <laughs> Go back and watch a tape. Mr. Lax picked, you're not Mr. Lax, I'm Mr. Lax for that pick. I picked Smithtown East. What the hell did you go away for? <laughs> uh, by the way, I just wanna say, this guy is all you're doing. <laughs> Buddy, okay. let, me, let me, Raph, Raph, yeah, I Mike. will agree 100% that you did on the show Pick Smithtown East. Wow. You said it. I Impressive. heard it right out there. Right. When we went to black and we were done with the segment, tell everybody what you said. And be honest. I don't be know what honest. I don't know what you're talking Raph. about. Raph. Mike, you can make up any excuse you I'm want. I'm not making up anything. All I know Jimmy. is I, you said West Islip and you Jim. were good because they rebounded to make the finals, but yeah, they yeah. lost to the team that I predicted. Yeah, but Jimmy. Soon as we went off the air, he sat in that seat. He's That's like, hearsay. What? Hearsay. Hearsay. How can it be hearsay because if this, I'm saying it? The, but I, I can say anything I want. That doesn't mean it's true. It, Brian, get him out of here. Cut him <laughs> off. Get, to get him to the girls' show. Exactly. The girls' show is tomorrow. He is refusing to admit. Soon as we went to black, he's like, oh, my God, I made a mistake. I meant to say Smithtown West. True story. I like to make fun of the guy. True story. He meant to say Smithtown West, but... What he said on the air, you have to stick with. Ah, yeah, listen. And don't ever take another he, show off. Give, don't, don't. He, he if it, even if it was a mistake, he did say Smithtown East, and now you insulted him a little bit. Willits is fun to watch, Anna, isn't he? He insulted him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <he's> funny. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. Uh, Willits is fun, huh? Ah, I mean, listen, you know what? It, we had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of fun with Craig Burrs this year. Yeah. You know, and talk about the athlete is and yeah. how he poses Will on different games, football games and, and, and lacrosse games. And then, then you stumble upon Willits. You start looking at his resume. You know what I mean? Where he's, you know, all county basketball, football, mm -hmm. lacrosse. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it's amazing. I mean, Mr. The, 105. Yeah, exactly. He goes to the Maverick Showcase, Paul Carcaterra, the great Carks uh, summer uh tour and as a 15 year old sophomore right. hits 105 on the gun there's a thousand routes out on long island route 110 route you know 106 107 you make 105? there should be a 105 that's rolling through smithtown right now hey listen be willie uh and just a junior be willie be willie is there's a 105 in massapequa lambert oh really <laughs> well be willie's going to north carolina but he's at the junior so he'll also be back next year Rooney will be back. Oh. De Simone will be back. It's Listen, incredible. Uh, Jim, here's uh, the thing. that A midfield and, of a junior and two freshmen. Uh, <laughs> and this is one of the things that we talked about on the Jersey Show. That crowd for the Bergen Catholic Del Barton game. You know me. I'm into crowds. Yes. It, a game cannot be. It justifies. A, unless there's a crowd. This is the number. And great job by the people on Long Island when the quarterfinals for college cross was played here. They packed after 15 and change. Okay, the next day at the University of Delaware, 7,200. Yeah. There were over 4,000 people yeah. at Hofstra for Massapequa, the home Smith office. County. Let's face it. It was, it was really, really good. And um, you know what? Let's get right to the highlights. Yeah. It was that good. It's the home office for lacrosse in America, Strong Island. Look at this. There's Tommy Scoff of Smithtown East. Ties the game in five. What a first quarter, Mike. It was electrifying. Five all. And there's B. Willie. And Smith County's second quarter goes up 7-5 in the game. Joey Sejaci rolls inside, keeps the goal, the lead, a two-goal lead. But here comes our number one team, Ian Kirby, 
to Jack Korber. Ties the game at eight. That's where we'd be at the half. Second half, Carter Hawthorne to Kirby. Kirby's awesome. I mean, Kirby going to Towson, the senior, what a ride he's had. And then to JC to Dan Rooney. Game is tied at nine. Rooney! Somebody's got to stop ball here, Jack Korber, because you know what? Jack says, I'll take it. 10-9, Massapequa. Smithtown East ball down 10-9. Matt Valdini, the senior. Big save there. And then Griff to Kirby. And it's 12-9. Looked like the Chiefs were in control. They'd roll. Craig Burrish, this looked like would end the game. But look at Sean Turner. Incredible. What a save there. Played 30 seconds in the game, and he was almost the hero. Comes in out of nowhere, and that gives Willits a chance to make it 11-10. This guy was a force. Griffin Barnathon, the Love junior. Him. Love him. Love I mean, just about his big game. plays at big times. Smithtown East, though, is going to make a late rush at this game. Dana Jealous makes it a one-goal game. So here we go. Last chance. Seconds ticking away. The roll inside doesn't happen. And Massapequa, are you kidding me? They have finally done it. Ding dong, the witch is dead. The Chiefs are Long Island champs. And this one will last a lifetime. That was a frantic it's final great. minute. Great. Uh, give them credit because it looked like Massapequa had the game in the rocking chair, mm. Mike. Mm. And Smithtown East comes back. Makes it a one-goal game. And you know what? For Massapequa to win this first title, I think it had to be hard. I think yeah. there had to be something. There had to be a story for poor Tim, for poor Tim Radomski yeah. to deliver that first title. Love Barnathon. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I did not know a lot about him. Love everything no. about the way right. his game translates. Barney. And I, and I and I talked to Burge after. I'm like, hey, I liked what you did at X behind the cage early on, you know, pushing off that high ankle sprain. And he told me, he goes, because I, I said, how you feeling? He goes, yeah, my other ankle feel, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what, what's wrong with your other ankle? He hurt his other ankle in practice. Tim, 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 stop practicing the kid. Okay, just <laughs> let him play. If you're lucky, he plays two more games. He doesn't need any practice. He doesn't need any practice. Valdini, flat out spectacular nah, in this game. Ten saves. Oh, great. And uh, he was talking after. Yep, yeah, uh, my coaches kept me in it. They were telling me to see the ball move on from the next goal. So I just focused on the ball, saved a few, and tried getting it to the uh... Matt, you guys, you know, you're, you're giving up eight at halftime. You go in the locker room. Clearly, you guys made some adjustments in the second half. Can you tell us a little bit about what you guys did differently in order to try to slow down that Smithtown East offense? Well, what we noticed was, we mean, we knew 40 was the shooter, so we pushed out on him. And also, they were getting a lot of off-ball movement. So, uh, I mean, usually we don't let that up, so... Uh, he pretty much just said, any ball that gets in, check it down. <laughs> it's, it was just chaotic. And you know, your heart races and your blood pressure goes up and you just hold your breath that you know, defense can hunker down and, make, and the goalie can make a save. And uh, thank God it'll, they took a shot wide and the clock ran out and Long Island champs. It's, it's an awesome feeling just for you know, my players, uh, my coaching staff is the best. And for all the players before us that couldn't get it done, you know, we did it for them too. And uh, just a great feeling. It's a great, great feeling. <laughs> I went down to talk to him after the game. He goes, yeah, I think my staff and I are going to go grab a fresca. Oh, I mean, he, <laughs> you could tell he was kind of, you know, trying to keep his emotions together yeah, there, yeah. Mike, um, because, um, sure, was this a victory for all these seniors, Burge and Kirby and Corber and Corber and, you know, Valdini with the three sons of Italy on defense in front of him, Caracappa, Capuana, Balzano. I like those you know, defensive guys. Right, gr great, but like Tim Radomski said, um, this was a victory for all the guys who played before. You know, yeah. there are certain towns in the tri-state where there's a relationship between a sport and a town. Okay, that's a tight one. There's pride, there's expectations. Uh, and there's then, pressure. Right, but here's the thing. Then there's towns where when that sport doesn't have what right. the other towns do, they get a little insulted. Mm. Okay, they feel like, how could it possibly, we have never won a Long Island Championship in lacrosse. And Massapequa finally has that Long Island Championship and they have these group of guys uh, to credit. And uh, that's it, they're in, the, they're in the, the ring of honor now, they're in the winner's circle. I hope Valdini stays true to his word and goes plays for my new best friend, Gordon Purdy Sr. I met Gordon for the first, this cat, the head yeah. coach of Adelphi, uh, 
I love Fun. everything about if you're Matt, that's the type of guy you want to be around for the next four years. He is, and he loves him. Yeah. You know, he I, just, and I, he, I told Radomski after, now let's get greedy and go win the next two. Well, you got to do this next. Uh, Wednesday, it gets it all started because the big boys play early in this whole tournament. So at 3.30, Niski's going to come down from Albany with that one loss to our number two team, which is just one spot behind Massapequa, who's our number one team. And that game, like the game, we all thought that there would be a lot of scoring. Dylan Butler was going on and on last week about how the over-under was 25. Push, 25. Mm. So this game will also have a lot of scoring. We no th doubt. That first quarter, Mike, was everything you love about the game of lacrosse. Everything. We call it, you know, 30 years ago I learned the, the game of lacrosse as the fastest game on feet, shooting, yeah. scoring. It was everything. Five all, yeah. it was like entertaining. It was like theater. When Lindbrook beat Beth Page in the semifinals, Garden City and Manhasset played in the other semifinal. Manhasset beat Garden City by a goal. They had lost to Lindbrook in overtime in the regular season yeah. by a goal. I thought that Manhasset would get Lindbrook. Once again, Mr. Lax was not right when judging these owls. Joe Grassi, bingo. That's a good goalie he beat there, too, and mighty Joe Young. And then Mike McVeigh, who has just been playing wonderful across the push to Gordon Purdy, Jr., and Jr. gets the goal, 4-1. Matty Gavin, Brendan McDougal. This dude, hey, if you're going to score on Brendan, you better score from outside because inside he's on, he's untouchable. And then Purdy, the pass to Owen Daly. A little deke, a little dump. They're moving on to the championship game. Their first Nassau County title since 03. McDougal had 15 saves in that game, and he was pretty giddy afterwards. I just felt like I was in the zone from the start. Uh, my defense was just behind me the whole way. It just was great. <laughs> no, it means everything. Uh, beginning of the year, we set our goals, me and Joe Gross, you know, the captains, to get to this position, and we got it done. It just feels amazing. McVay, he's, uh, boy, he's, he's the consummate teammate because both he and Purdy, if you're out there running around, they're going to find you. There's no doubt. Those guys head up, always looking. And Jim, so they needed to play somebody. So they got Rocky Point after Rocky Point got by Miller Place. Patty Dallin again, the yeah. goalie, as he's been all year. 14 saves in that game. So Rocky Point got their first title since 08. The preseason number 10. So that set up Rocky Point Lindbrook. Now, you're focused during that game. You're calling the game with McCabe and doing your thing. In the booth right next to us was Gordon Purdy Sr. <laughs> and his wife, Carol. Big Red. <laughs> Beautiful lady. I, that, I was watching the game and watching her. Coach is like, calm down, calm down, relax. She's in there going crazy. <laughs> I was so into watching that. Hey, it's one thing huh. to watch your husband coach a game. It's a whole nother thing to watch your son play but in know, a game. It's so funny because I would have thought when I asked her after, What's more difficult? She goes, oh, watching. She doesn't even go to the Adelphi games anymore. <laughs> Come on, this is your son. But she, no, it okay. was into You know, it, you so. want to talk about a vested interest. That's your baby boy. You know, the kid that we said last week was born with the stick I in know. his crib. Uh, Jim, every week, you know, I have a new favorite player. My new favorite player. Well, there's two of them from this right. game, right? Eddie Buhol. Eddie the Beast. Because, first of all, he's going to play for my buddy Cassis in a year and a half. Kevin Lehigh. Up at Lehigh. Yeah. He just brings a toughness, toughness yeah. to the game. And then Owen Daly, who, I'm going to be honest, I did not think that anybody would steal the mojo away from Jackie Sullivan from Rocky Point, the yeah. fabulous face-off guy. And we'll break down uh, Owen a little bit later. But Austin Fable, McVeigh, Purdy, Grassi, McDougal, they were all doing it. Barrett, Herman. He he was the Arsiri of Nassau. Everything that Jerry Arsiri was for yep. Smithtown East and Suffolk and their run, this is what Owen Daly became for Lindbrook. The A was a thriller and the B would not take a back seat. Oh yeah. Game was tied at one. Jordan Ferdig to Kyle Gardner. Look at the pole scoring in the LIC. 2-1 Rocky Point. Then Alex Borgia makes it 4-2 Rocky Point. And then Gordon Purdy gets going. Great field sense. Look at the touch right here to Austin Fable. Huge day for Fable. Lindbrook down 5-4. And then it's Fable. Most improved player on the team, said head coach Bill Laley. You could see why. 
Had a huge summer, man, where he put the time in and paid off. Because Fable just kept coming. Makes it 6-5. And then look at Fable. Not only four goals, tack an assist on there, too. To Owen Daly. Hey, I'm not just a full goal. It was 8-5 Lindbrook. But Rocky Point would come back. Here's Ferdig to Brendan McGovern. McGovern, top shelf. Downtown, I should say. 8-7 there. But Lindbergh ball, up one. These are the important goals. You're up 8-7. McVeigh to Mikey Toy makes it 9-7. And then McVeigh, solid all day was Mike McVeigh. To Gordon Purdy, no. This is the pole right here, scoring in Troy Ray. So Troy Ray had pulled him within one. Now down one, final seconds. It's Justin Ray to Troy Ray. Look at that save on the doorstep. And then watching the final seconds, ball to the doorstop. Oh, are you kidding me? Alex Borgia came that close. But Brendan McDougal stood his ground. And Lindbrook is a Long Island champ for the first time since 2000. Wow. Unbelievable ending. Yeah. A lot to talk about. Let's do it. It was great, you know, uh, all credit to our coaches and uh, everyone out there, uh, our wings, everyone played great and uh, is, this is unbelievable, I can't believe uh, we're here right now. Oh, and you guys have done a great job, you're 19-1 and one now, talk to us a little bit about your team's mindset as this season opened, did you see this happening or were you caught by surprise at all? Uh, we knew we were good, you know, we, we fly on the, the radar, uh, no one really knew about us, but uh, we know uh, we can play hard and uh, we've been uh, grinding all season and uh, this is the outcome, this is the result and I'm so happy right now. All of a sudden, I must have said something to upset Lindbergh people. <laughs> what do we have? Quick 60. Do you give a hoot now, Einstein? How many more times are you going to underrate Lindbrook? This team is on a mission. <laughs> hey, Matt. Matt. <laughs> Matt Paris. This is Mr. Lax. I ain't Einstein, buddy. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, I don't know, we looked all over for that tweet. He blasted that the other day to me, and then we couldn't find it. So we had to dig that thing out. Uh, Jim, look. Jack Sullivan has had a wonderful year. He's the one guy this year when he went up against a Siri from Smithtown East when yeah, Rocky Point did. beat him, had the better of Huge. him. So he's been incredible. And then he ran into the Stony Brook Brown Jr., Owen Daly. Daly, without question, the story of this game because he won 20 of 23 faceoffs. He was great. Listen, Owen Daly is an all-county linebacker in football. Uh, his coach calls him a beast at the face-off X. He got hot, he got on a roll, and he just got going. And Sullivan, you're right, has been amazing. Don't forget, Sullivan had scored three goals in their last two games. Each he had six goals in his last two games. He was on fire, but hey, sometimes that's a rhythm at that face-off X. Daly got it going, and it continued. And he was 7-for-7 seven seven in the third quarter, Daly. You psyched for 5.30 on Wednesday? How could you not be? Because when they dropped the ball at X to start this game, Mr. Daly, get ready for Mr. Palmadesso. Luke Palmadesso, the Villanova bound face-off man for Yorktown. There's your game. It's gonna be good. Within the game, no question about it. Congratulations to Locust Valley. When they beat Cold Spring Harbor 8-7, they won their first ever title, and they were behind in the third quarter in doing so, and they beat a traditional sea power in Cold Spring Harbor. They had beaten friends, the defending champs, in the semifinals, so now they just had to figure out who they're gonna play. And they got Babylon, who was two better than BBP in the championship out there. That set the stage for the Long Island final, and Locust Valley came out well, up against it because Babylon, this school where 18 of their 26 kids play football and their leader, Nick Santarelli, came out doing his thing. There from in close and here, a quarterback on a football team, touchdown. Unassisted. I mean, just look at the acceleration he's using with his feet to get some space and just that big hard shot. He had four goals in this game. Luke Zappia, who is just a jitterbug, flies around this field, giving it up to Navy-bound Ray Wardell. The big fella makes it 5 nothing. Zach Amelia going to pass to Zappia here. Yep. And Zappia also had four goals in the game. Him and Santarelli were just running and gunning all day. And look at Santarelli again. This is just an athlete, folks. Even at the sharp angle here, he goes five-hole. And Babylon, hey, they made some history themselves. 
Oh, he was great. And we saw a lot of wonderful lacrosse players Saturday at Hofstra. Nick Santarelli would start on any, any A team, any B team. He was great. He had handed Rocky Point their only loss of the year earlier this season with five goals, including the game winner. And he was talk, talking to Carl afterwards. Football is awesome and it means a lot, but lacrosse is like the powerhouse of the country. So it kind of says a lot when you're the best lacrosse team in the region that breeds lacrosse players. So I thought we had to get one. I mean, we win in football every year. and It's great. It feels awesome. There's nothing like football, but doing something they've never done before is a little bit more remarkable. Mm. They'll be up in West Point in the fall. The United States Military Academy. Getting we'll a good spend one. Some time with him. I feel the better. Season. I feel yeah. better with him up there. Uh, terrific, terrific kid. And Babylon felt better with Carlock defending the back line because Jake had played lacrosse through his set freshman year at Babylon. That was, and that was it. And then he gave it up to Just focus on football, football and basketball, right. where he won county titles right. and Long then, Island titles. And then he was back at 14. Oh man, well, he, he is just everywhere. Mike, he came back because their all-star defender, Eric Schweitzer, went out with a knee injury at the end of football, and his teammates convinced him, hey, Jake, please come back out for lacrosse. We need you. And Jake Carlock was doing what he does best, being an athlete, throwing his body around, making plays, and just being a leader for this team, you know, in a spot they needed. Look, could he replace Schweitzer? No way. But he definitely gave them something. And now this group, Mike, you know, you ask a group of kids, make your mark on a school. They won two football championships. You mentioned the 18 guys. Uh, they won a Long Island basketball championship. Now they won the school's first ever lacrosse championship. This is what I love about Carl Locke. He's a high character kid because, of course, he's the big star. Everybody wants to talk to him. But you know what Jay Carl Locke said after the game? When they said, hey, Jake, you, you've won a lacrosse championship. He says, hey, hey listen. I know if you read Dylan Butler's article that we've won all the other sports, but it is about the other guys that are the real stars. I couldn't replace Schweitzer. He is something else. And they're all great athletes. I just wanted to help. They deserve this moment. I thought that was nice. I, that's Herzog's article. No, that's from Herzog's, but Dylan Butler's article had him talking about playing all the other sports and what it was like to win in different sports. What's better, the football, the basketball, all that good stuff. The late game. It's going to be good. Don't get caught up in the fact that they're the smaller schools. This is going to be fun. Babylon has wonderful athletes. Bronxville is absolutely loaded. Well, I don't know if you've heard about Mr. Lax, what this cat's been doing. Last week was 7-0. This week, 8-0, which prompted people to know, what do you think about the Long Islands? Well, I couldn't have picked the Long Islands, so I gave you a sealed envelope right before the game. And here are my, these were this, my predictions for the Long Island this Champions. This was locked in the safe at Farrick Lynch yep. and McCartney, the great Dave McCartney, our lawyer. This was yep. a sealed envelope all weekend. Let's go through it. And here okay. we go. In the A, in, I picked who? In the A, here we are, Mr. Lack, Class A, bum, 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 Smithtown East. Class B, bum, 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 Rocky Point. Class C. <laughs> Oh, it is the three-peat, the trifecta, the trilogy, Locust Valley. That... So what does that tell you? Mr. Lax only performs on TV. He does not perform on envelopes. So, 0 for 3. Jim, <laughs> you know who's feeling oh, good? The three Mr. teams Lax. that won Long Island and the Mullers. How about this? Oh, How Billy. About Billy. And his beautiful wife, Lindsay. Abigail Lynn last oh, week was brought goodness. into this world five pounds, nine ounces. Look and at I that. I think Muller put a stick in her hand. Because what's the best way to get a college scholarship in girls lacrosse? Hopefully Abigail can run because that way they ain't paying for college. Oh, that is true. Congratulations, Bill. Congratulations, Lindsay. Now, now, Billy and I, our favorite song is the same. Thank heaven for little girls. The only problem for Abigail is, is if she plays lacrosse, Raph will have to talk about her. Dylan will be talking. What a disaster. He'll be live chatting Saturday. So he'll probably, well, it, he'll just be typing, I guess, next to you and McCabe, right? Yes, he's and a then, multitasker. And then tomorrow night, Jim, if we don't get a lot of people oh, involved, we, more this threats. is the last Long Island quick hits that we will do. <laughs> uh, because, And I will be picking... A special presentation of Put a Face on It, I will be picking the A 
the B and the C semifinals. And then Thursday, we'll have our regular put a face on it segment. And Jim, oh baby, you are busy. This is a tough week for you because ready. it's a lot of prep work, like like real I'm fast. I'm ready. Saturday, triple header. We'll have them all right here on embassyvarsity.com, live at 11, Class A, Class B at 1:30, Class C at 4 o'clock. Let's see if the new blood can continue. Lindbrook, first title since 2000. Of course, Babylon, first ever, and Massapequa. All hail the Chiefs. They are LI champs. Way to go, Abigail Lynn.